Hello everyone, this is Teresa from Pumpkin Glass and today I'm doing a short video on how to make this simple chevron bracelet and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. It's something that I teach a lot to groups especially and we have kits on our website for many, many color combinations. But I'm going to show you today this one. I called this kit here that I've got the beads out for the Southwestern color combination with red and the materials you'll need if you don't um, have a kit are four and a half millimeter closed jump rings. These are 18 gauge. We have the size six seed beads. These are from my Yuki. So they have fairly consistent hole sizes. I've noticed if you get, if you have a brand of seed beads other than these Japanese Mayukis, the holes tend to be inconsistent and sometimes quite a bit smaller. So this is fairly important. And I've got um, 56 of these with me. Um, this is one and a half millimeter leather. You can also use one millimeter leather. If, um, if the one and a half is too large, you will find out that leather being a natural product does have some variations in size. I think the industry allows them to be 0.3 millimeters off. So a one and a half millimeter leather could be 1.8, which is generally too big to get through these holes. Or it could be um, thinner, like 1.2. So you just really need to check the leather with the hole size that you've got. Um, I've got a pewter shank button here. You could use a button without a shank also. You just have to thread your leather through the top hole and back down again. Um, some hypo cement glue. I like this brand because it has the, the needle point applicator on the end. So it's easy to get the glue actually up inside the knots. Although sometimes challenging to get the little pin back in the tube. Um, a ruler and something to cut your leather with. I always have pliers for wire cutting handy, but you could also use a, a pair of sharp scissors if you don't have wire cutters. Okay, so let's, let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is thread my, my button on my leather. And I'm going to put the two ends together here and straighten it out so that I can, so I've got the ends together so I can easily center my button without having to use a ruler. And I'm going to hold these together as one piece and make an overhand knot. So I'm gonna wrap both pieces around my index finger, slide that loop that I made off, and then take the button with the leather strung through it, through that loop, and kind of push with my thumb and index finger as I pull and tighten that knot up so that I can get it to land pretty close behind the button. Now, if you have a bigger gap, that's fine. And honestly, you really don't want it any closer than this. If you don't have a little bit of a loop here, it puts too much stress on this piece of leather that's going through the shank. So give yourself room to let the button move freely. Next step is to make sure that the beads we're gonna string up are centered. If you look at this bracelet, let me show you the finished one again. There we go. And see how we have a little bit of room here at the end for the loop on the bracelet. I like to center the beads on my wrist. So I usually leave a little bit of room here at the beginning. Now, um, if you have a really tiny wrist, I mean under six inches, you might not need to space this over because it's going to um, take away a lot of your beads to hook it to your wrist size. But, you know, for an average wrist, like um, a wrist measuring six and a half and up, I usually leave a little bit of space here at the beginning. And to do that, I'm going to pick my, my bracelet back up make another loop around my finger and tie that same knot 
and just give myself a second knot just a little ways away from my first knot and this distance will depend if you have a big wrist you're going to want to leave more room but I'm just going for average so I'm going to put a little knot just a little distance away from the first one and if if you're measuring I've got about a quarter of an inch between the knots on this one all right next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to angle the leather on the end of these strands just to make stringing a little bit easier so I'm going to take my flush cutters with the flat side towards the leather and I'm going to angle it pretty severely hopefully you can see that but I am at a really sharp angle to the leather so I'm not just cutting it off across the end but see how I've got a pretty angular cut so that I have a longer point what I want to be able to do is get this angled section all the way through a bead so if my bead hole is a little small the thin part will stick out the other end so I can grab it and pull it through so I am doing the same thing on this other end okay see we've got a nice point there and I'm going to start with the bead. Now I'm going to do these just randomly. Um, if you want to make a pattern, we weigh these beads out so you won't have even quantities of each. You're going to have a mix. And actually, why don't I just, why don't I make just a little bit of a, a grouping pattern on this bracelet so you can see how to do that. So randomly pick them up or you can kind of divide them by color so you know how many you have and do a few together each time. So I'm going to start with a red one on one of my strands. And I'm going to hold it here so it doesn't go all the way down the leather so I can see which strand has the bead on it. And I'm going to take my two strands together and slide a closed ring on over both strands so that it sits on top just like that. All right. Now I can easily see that I've got a piece of leather on this strand, but not on this other one. So I'm going to take another bead, and I'm going to put it on the opposite strand. Eh. I guess I'm going to try to. It's hard with this camera that I'm working under. And then again, I'm going to put on a ring over both strands. And then I am sure you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the other strand, put a bead on, and then put a jump ring on both of them. So basically, I am just alternating sides to add my beads and then placing a jump ring on over both strands. And it looks like I have quite a few red ones, so I'm going to do a couple more in this group. All right, whoops, wrong one. Okay, so there you go. And I can see that I haven't missed anything. Now I'm going to leave one bead up here at the top and the rest of them I'm going to slide down my leather and you might have to do them a little bit at a time because they kind of pull here keep everything straight towards the knot and what happens is because the beads are alternating on the leather strands, I have a chevron pattern. Okay. So I'm going to go back up here, and I think I'll put on a few of a second color. And I want to keep this red guy high. And it doesn't matter if your strands aren't exactly equal in length. Hold them so they are. It just makes your life easier when you're working on this. So I can see I'm ready for a ring. And I'm ready to, let's do this chartreuse. 
add some beads on the opposite side. Okay, and my strands have become uneven here, so I'm struggling a little bit. Let's move that up. All right, looks like I've got about half of the green ones on from my pile, maybe a little less than half. Let me put one on this side. In a ring and push these down. If you wait too long to slide them down, your bracelet becomes difficult to get them to move if you try to move them in a big bunch. So just do them a group at a time because you don't want to wear through your, your leather. And I'm going to leave a little bit, actually I forgot to do this, I'm going to leave a little bit of room at the beginning. It just allows a gap so that your bracelet can flex so it's not too tight so that's what we have now all right so looking at my colors uh, it looks like I only have a few blue whoops this is pulled out let me put this guy back through my ring and I'm kind of keeping an eye when I slide them down every once in a while too then I can see if I've made a mistake and put two rings on or two beads on the same side and I have to take off the whole bracelet to fix it. So I've only got a couple blue, so I've got four of them. So I'm gonna put two on now and a ring. Whoops. And one on this side. And I've got a couple of these brown ones. It looks like for that I can use on each side. So I'll do those. Okay. And I am going to, I think I'm going to put on all these turquoise in what will end up being the center. Okay. And that's what we have so far. So I'm going to pause it here and um, finish stringing the rest of these beads and then come back to you and show you how to finish. Okay, I'm back and I have all my beads almost on here. I still have a few red, red ones here and I only have three rings left. You will have extra beads um, that you can use for the fringe. When you're out of rings, you're done. Now. Um, I stopped here to show you, you probably want to check your wrist, wrist size. And if you have a small wrist, you probably want to do it before now. I know that this is going to need more beads to fit my wrist, but. So as you wrap it around your wrist, um, you want to like, take into account that you need to make a loop for this button. So if my button were all the way down here next to this bead, then I know it's time to stop adding beads and rings and make a loop for my button. Um, for this particular demonstration, I'm going to show you how to make an adjustable loop because my wrist is rather large, like I said. So this would probably be about the right size for somebody with um, maybe a six inch wrist or six and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop and make this adjustable by doing two loops. So it will fit someone with a little wrist or a larger wrist. Now when you end, you wanna end on a bead. 
Otherwise, let me show you what happens if you end on a loop. If you end on a loop, instead of a bead, then your loop doesn't have anything to push it down at an angle on, so it just kind of floats around there and doesn't look so great. So end on a bead. And the first thing I'm gonna do is tie a knot behind my last bead. And again, I'm gonna leave myself just a little bit of room so that when I'm wearing the bracelet, it doesn't bind up and can flex a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna tie a second knot here. And I'm gonna leave room in between them so that I can pretty easily get the button through before I tighten it down. And you gotta remember that somebody's gonna be doing this with one hand. You don't want it too big, but you don't want it so tight that they have to struggle to get the bracelet on and off. So there we go. So I want the button to go through pretty easily. And then just doing that is gonna add quite a bit of length to the bracelet. So that's why if the button is close to this bead, you're probably ready to go ahead and end it because you're gonna add, <laughs> about an inch to the length of your bracelet with the clasp. Now, to make this adjustable, and I cut my leather a little bit short compared to what I gave you guys, I could just tie another knot here after the first one. I lost my tail here, push him through. And that would give me two buttonholes so the person I am gifting it to could hook it in either spot, depending on their wrist size. Um, instead, however, I'm gonna use my extra beads to show you how to make a little bit of um, beaded fringe on the end for your tails. I'm just gonna add I guess maybe three beads on each piece of leather that I have still laying on my mat here. Actually, maybe I'll do red, blue, red. And I wanted to be sure to show you this because your directions um, tell you to dye a double overhand knot. And sometimes people aren't um, great at just looking at a picture of a knot and figuring out what it's trying to tell you. So I thought I would show you. A double no overhand knot holds better than a single overhand knot. And since this is the end of our bracelet, these I'm not concerned about gluing or anything because they're not going anywhere. They all have beads behind them. But these tails on the end can open up easier. So to tie a double overhand, you're gonna make a loop like before, pass the tail through the loop. So that's a single overhand knot. And as you know, when you tighten these, they can you can pick them open pretty easily. And the tails tend to do this kind of right angle thing that I don't like the looks of. So instead of just going through once, a double overhand means you take this little tail and put it through the loop a second time. So you have kind of a, a double pretzel thing. And as you go to tighten it, you kind of want to work those loops together and it makes this really nice looking wrapped knot that gives you a straight tail so you don't have that funny angle thing. And see when I push on it, it doesn't loosen up like an overhand knot does. It makes a much sturdier knot that honestly you don't really have to feel compelled to glue necessarily. They generally stay in on leather because the leather's a little sticky. So let me do it 
on this one too. So I'm going to make a loop and I left by not making these equal, I left this side a little short, but that's okay. So let me poke this through again. Oops. Come on, guy, get in there. And why is it when we're um, complaining about something not working, the inanimate object is always a guy? I don't know why that is. So got him in there, and now I'm going to kind of push those loops, those two loops together to make that wrap look. And on these ends, I don't like to tie it right behind the beads because I feel like if I make the knot tight right behind the beads, they kind of stick out. They're, they become like little pokers and they don't hang as nice as leaving them a little bit longer. So there we go. I'm going to trim my ends off. And I am going to dab these with a little bit of glue. And so take my hypo cement and I'm going to jab it down inside that knot. And this does dry clear and actually a little bit flexible. So unlike the super tight glues that dry hard and crackly and kind of can tend to dry your leather out and make it more prone to breakage. Now, if you didn't leaf fringe on your bracelet, you will want to put glue on this last knot because that is what's holding your loop shut instead of these here at the end. So there's my finished bracelet. And